All right, so to give us some perspectives on that and more, let's head to Abuja. Markwe. Well, thank you, Chamberlain. We have with us this morning in our studios, Professor Yowese, Yowese Hai. Yes, it's not what you see on TV. <laughs> it has a different pronunciation. Um, he's the SDP president. He's an SDP presidential aspirant because he's still an aspirant. And the primaries are yet to be conducted, so we do not know if he's going to emerge as a candidate. He's been an ambassador of Nigeria to Mexico and high commissioner of Nigeria in Canada. You're welcome to Sunrise Daily. Thank you. It's less than six months to the elections, and there's been a lot of politicking. Uh, in fact, some people believe that to a large extent, it would seem that we've concentrated so much on politicking and the politics being played by uh, members of the National Assembly, even the executive, to the detriment of governance. Uh, but at the end of the day, some people will say it's now that time of the year where we will begin to look at the credentials of all the political parties so far and see who it is that is going to be uh, governing us, say, in the coming elections or who might emerge winner in the coming elections and precisely what these people have in store for us. Uh, let us look at what has happened so far, I mean, where we are currently as a country. What do you think, uh, where would you say we're getting things wrong? Where would you say we have the most problems uh, that has spurred people like you to say, I think I can fix this? Thank you very much. The basic problem with Nigeria is we have bad leaders. They are not concerned with building and nourishing a country. They have no vision of where we are coming from and where Nigeria ought to go. They have not designed a clear roadmap to Nigeria's greatness. So it's this whole thing that has made our country to continue to walk backwards instead of going forward. To be an underdeveloping country rather than a fast developing country. But some people will say, I mean, isn't that simplistic, bad leadership? That is, that is generalization. It's we not, have had stints of, uh, you know, commendable leadership at some point or, you know, the other, or people who are doing pretty well in certain areas or in certain states. You know, some people would say that, you know, some states are doing better than others, for instance. Uh, isn't it too generalistic to say we, we've suffered from bad leadership? No, specifically at the national levels. All countries that have developed have developed because of a conscious desire by the top echelon of the leadership to have a clear idea about nation building. For one, we are so badly divided. There has not been a conscious effort to have a nation where every citizen considers himself a Nigerian citizen. We are people who simply revert to our ethnicities. And some of our leaders are proud to look at themselves as ethnic leaders rather than national leaders. So the fundamental thing to national greatness is to insist to have a nation, a nation where we, the Nigerian people, all collectively can say it is ours. We need to have people in this federation who feel federated, who feel they are part of the federation and that they are not second class citizens or that their voices do not matter and who continue to cling on the margin of the nation's economy. We look at a country like Nigeria in the 21st century that has collectively refused to elect leaders who understand clearly how to develop a country in such a way that Nigeria today can have a first-class infrastructure which will enable people to grow. We are today still grappling with basic issues like education. And so where is the success story when one part of the country is developed, another is underdeveloped? Take a look at Nigeria. Cut it right in the middle. 
-hmm. You will well, see that. No, just a minute. Go on. The, from western side of Nigeria is fully developed. Uh, industrialization has taken place. Education is on. And look at the eastern part of the country. All the way, there's no infrastructure. Even the railroad on the western side is developing. On the eastern side, nothing. Is it surprising, therefore, that we have the Boko Haram starting on that eastern flank? Why should Nigeria be the country that has the largest number of young people not enrolled in the school system in the world? Why are all our indices so bad? Why should we even say that some people are successful when we have a government and a political class that is simply concerned with holding office for the sake of their own personal growth and wealth. Why should we have so many people in powerful position who are not concerned about the majority of Nigerians that cannot eat? Why would we have a country mm. like we have now where poverty is so prevalent and the government that is so concerned with telling lies mm. to the citizens. You, it is have, this you, that you, you have asked a lot of valid that, yes. questions. I mean, and, and a lot of these questions are the questions that Nigerians ask themselves on a daily basis. But when they begin to find the solutions, they also know that, you know, they have to be a part of the solution. Some people might say that the, not when you talk about leadership, you're also talking about the elite. Yes. You have served this country in many different capacities. You are a professor. In other words, you have been in this country's education system. You have been an ambassador. You have been a minister of state. Uh, in other words, you have been a part of the leadership. Yes. So can you really talk about these problems and say the problem is bad leadership? Yes, exactly. In your own position as minister, as ambassador, did you provide bad leadership when you were there? In a way... Yes, because the system is dysfunctional. I analyze, I'm not part of the corruption, I'm not part of the bad decision making, but one person at a time who is excellent in understanding and conceptualizing what needs to be done. The country needs a revolution, a, revo a peaceful revolution to change. Which you didn't start when you were in office, which some people would have said that perhaps one of the ways to have started it was when you actually had access to people in power. I do have. I have always been revolutionary. And if given the opportunity, mm -hmm. I will be the Nigerian president that will instigate a mentality revolution, a revolution in consciousness, a revolution in what Nigerians think and do. I'm a writer. And if you read everything I've written, it's revolutionary. And we need ideas.